for elk because she had never seen an elk in Iowa. And of course, you don't chase elk down. So she sat down to rest and have a little picnic. And she looked down and saw an outcropping of rock there. And it looked like gold to her. And so she broke off a piece of that rock and took it down and showed it to her husband, Henry. And then Henry took it on to Colorado Springs to have it assayed. And it turned out to be high grade gold ore. So it was Molly Kathleen that discovered the gold on this mine up on the surface. Oh, and birthday. what she most likely <laughs> found is something like G here. And this is what we call free gold, where you can actually see the yellow gold in the rock like that. And that comes about up on the surface through the erosional process. When a piece of rock like that was golden and laid in a creek for a few thousand years, gold is virtually indestructible, but everything around the gold erodes away, and then all you have left is just the gold. So if that little piece of rock stayed in a creek for another four or five hundred years, that would become a gold nugget or a gold dust or something along that line. And we did find a few small gold nuggets and some of the gold dust in the creeks around here, but 99% of the gold that we find here is found in the rock where it has to go to the mill. Then H here is a really fun example of a vein. When you talk about a vein of gold, those gray lines going through there, we call those contacts. And in between the two contacts is the gold bearing ore. On the outside of the contacts is the waste rock or the host rock. But that's what a vein looks like. It's only about a half inch wide there. That is a vein of gold. So, and then in the next case, oh, well, that's a chunk of the raw silver. So the silver is kind of a cold black color when it's found out on the mine here. That's almost like a silver nugget there, a tarnished silver nugget. And I'll show you a piece of the high grade over here. The gold of this area is in what they call a telluride ore. And so the gold is in a compound where it's mixed with silver and the element tellurium and other minerals and metals. And again, like I say, the rock has to go to the mill to get the gold out. But the really high grade forms of the gold are what we call sylvanite and calaverite. And if those were crystals of sylvanite in there, they'd be on average about 25% gold. If they were crystals of calaverite, they'd be on average about 40% gold. And this is what those crystals look like enlarged here in the photograph. So the gold down deep in the mines, the high grade, it kind of looks like aluminum foil. It's a bright, shiny silver. And this is that crescent mine that I was telling you about that Nick and my dad worked together on back in the 1950s. But in 1914, they were mining along on a vein of gold down there in the crescent, 1,200 feet underground. And they broke into this open cavern down there. It's what we call a bug, but it was kind of like a big gigantic geode. It was a room about the size of this room here, except 40 feet high, and it was left over from that volcanic activity. And when they blasted in there, they went in the next day to check it out, and there were crystals of gold sticking off the walls, and they just sparkled all the walls they had in there. And they took a million two hundred thousand dollars in gold out of that crescent bug in 30 days, and that went back. Gold was just over twenty dollars an ounce. So, and at today's gold price, that'd be about twenty million dollars in gold in 30 days. So, and this is one of the specimens out of that crescent bug and that ore there it runs better than 2,000 ounces of gold per ton so that means for every pound of rock they found an ounce of gold in each pound of rock so very high grade ore and that's what the miners used to try to steal out of the mines because they were only making three or four dollars a day and so for a little extra jippo we call that high grading and the mine owners caught on to that so when you come up out of the mine at the end of the day you go into the shower room the dry we call it where you take your shower and you strip out of your work clothes your diggers and you walk from one room to the next room naked and there's an inspector there and he checks you out checks out all your body cavities he checks out your thermos bottle your lunch bucket your heart at your boots your cigarette pack your snuff can all that to make sure you're not stealing gold out of the mine and one old timer he had a big black and gray bushy beard and he would take those crystals of collaborate stick them down into his beard and then go home and comb them out and wash them out in the bathtub at night so that's how we got away with some of the gold but it is a felony if you get caught stealing gold out of the mine right you're in big trouble so you just have to be really good at it and i didn't say that <laughs> to give you some motivation there are uh, there are rock and mineral collectors today they would pay five to six thousand dollars for that one specimen so there are specimens in here that are worth anywhere from a thousand to eight or ten thousand dollars a piece and that's why this is all secured in here so and then uh, calling inside that geo there you see that little piece of iron power to fools go there mm -hmm. that little piece of iron power right there is worth about 50 cents this piece of high grade here is worth about six thousand dollars so this is the one you want and if i hear that glass breaking after i leave you're in big trouble <laughs> I want to do that. This is a claim map here. This is what the mining claims look like. They're long, narrow claims. They're 1,500 feet long by 300 feet wide, just a little over 10 acres. And you can mine all the way to China. But you had to stay within the boundaries of that 1,500 feet by 300 feet. So they had surveyors and engineers down here. Every inch of this tunnel work down here is mapped out. So. And then this is the Portland mine here. This is the richest gold mine in the state of Colorado. It always has been, probably always will be. It's right above the city of Victor. And that's where all the pretty big gold mines are at over in Victor, if you want to see those. But anyway, there's three shafts on that Portland property. And my grandfather, he worked on the Portland two here for about 16 years. Now this is the Ajax here. And you can see where it's over 3,000 feet deep there. So and it's right above Victor. <laughs> We're going to go ahead and give you a specimen of the gold we're going to take back with you. And I know you came down here to retire. You'll not be able to retire on this one specimen of the gold war, but I'll go ahead and pass these up. Mm -hmm. Silver? Yeah, silver.
and she found something specific. But you'll see some glitter in some of this. You want to keep in mind that all the glitters is not gold. Some of that glitter is iron pyrite pools gold, but we very often find iron pyrite right along in the same vein with a real gold. So it's very common to find those two together. I'll just and if you want to see the gold on this specimen, you take this piece of gold ore I'm giving you, and you heat it up to about 1800 degrees Fahrenheit. Mm. When you get it really hot, why it burns everything away from the gold, and then the gold bubbles out and it turns yellow. And in this one photograph over here, and there's a specimen, and you can see the bubbles of gold on there, where it's come to the surface after, after it's been roasted. So that is one way to tell if there is gold at the bottom by roasting. Mm. Let's pass these on back then. So I'm going to trade you. Well, like that there. That's pretty cool. Yeah, we'll just pass them on oh. back. Just make sure everybody gets a specimen of the gold ore. Oh, we get to take it? Yeah. Oh, wow. You want to pass it on back? I thought I found something. I'm sorry. Your first name again? Shane. Shane? Is it? Did I hear that right? Yeah. Okay, okay yeah. All right, Shane. Yeah. There we go. Anyway, Shane, come on up here. I'll show you this one time and one time only. You remember this the rest of your life, okay? <laughs> this, this is what we call labor right. You leave it right in the car because it's not worth taking out. So, <laughs> take that piece of labor right and say, Steve, give me a worthless piece of labor right. So, here's your piece of labor right. There you go. All right. All right. Take that to show and tell and tell them whatever you want. <laughs> so, watch the fingers. Everybody get a specimen? We're all good? Yeah. yeah. Hold on. Hold on. Look. Somebody, I'm just yeah. somebody. Right there, actually. Yeah. You can size. You can add here. Okay, watch your fingers. And then uh, come down this way here. Uh, this is some of the Cripple Creek turquoise here. So we mine gold, silver, and turquoise in this area. It's very high quality turquoise. turquoise. It's found on the north end of the town of Cripple Creek. There are several turquoise mines. And sometimes we find the gold and the turquoise together. And that's the best combination. But that is Cripple Creek turquoise there. And then you can see this roasted specimen as you walk by there where it's been roasted. So. And if you come down this way, I'll show you this is the final stage of the smelting here. This is the blast furnace up here. We heat the material up that furnace to about 2200 degrees Fahrenheit. When the gold comes out of that furnace, it's in a molten form. You pour it into what they call a witch's hat, which is a cone-shaped device that is inverted. When it cools off in that witch's hat, well, then you turn it over, and out falls this cone of gold. And when I was working over there at that mill, that opened pit mine, they let us swim and watch that pour one day. And then when that cone of gold cooled off, and after work could handle it, they let us hold that cone of gold. And they had armed guards standing right there all of that. But on that day, what they poured down one cone was 90 pounds of gold. So we got to hold wow. not 90 ounces, but 90 pounds of gold. It took two hands to hold that thing. And today, that cone would be worth about 1.3 million dollars. So I just couldn't run fast enough. But anyway, that's <laughs> 90 pounds of gold. So I was a millionaire for a few seconds, Colin, and then they took it away from me. <laughs> <laughs> I thought it was payday. All right. Yeah, that's beautiful. Oh, wow. mm. Yeah, 90 pounds of gold. I know, that's a whole lot. <laughs> So whoever's up front there, if you want to take the chain off of the hook and just hook it on the other side and then walk on over there by that rope. And if you're afraid of heights, why well, don't look down. And if you do look down, I'm going to hang on to your hard hat and your camera and your baby. And your don't drop any down that hole there. And right up over your head there, that's the original Molly Kathleen vein. That's the vein of gold she discovered some 127 years ago up on the surface. And now it's been pretty well mined out down here for a thousand feet. And then down below, this is one of the last places they were working on the mine in 1961, just before the mine closed down. And they were trying to get as much gold and silver out of the mine as they could before it closed down. And so they did sink this little shaft down here. It's what we call a winds, and that is spelled W-I-N-Z-E. And a winds is like a mine within a mine. And this winds is about 80 feet deep here. But you blast the rock out down there, and then you load the rock into this bucket. And when those old timers got that bucket full of rock up here to begin with, they were just pulling the rock out a piece at a time. And then eventually they'd tip the bucket over and shovel the rock out. So it was fairly time consuming. But later on, some genius, and I mean, the guy was pretty smart that came up with this little play here. It's called an apron. And that apron helps you dump that ore bucket automatically. And if you just stand back here, I'll show you how we dump that ore bucket. And if you have your camera, you want to take a photograph of that old hoist over there. That was an old steam powered hoist that operated on steam. And now it's compressed air, but it's quite a relic, so I'd get a shot of that. But, oh, <laughs> no, I'll show you how we dump this ore bucket. And it's not loud. It's, yeah, it's not loud. Did you get it All right, there we go. Okay. You can see 
see how that apron picks up that chain on the bottom of the bucket and then just tips the bucket over and dumps the rock out. So pretty clever idea whoever came up with that. But I'll go ahead and pick it back up again now. type of bucket we use when we're sinking a shaft down, even the main shaft out there. Sometimes the buckets are a lot bigger than this one, but that's how you go to work every day is you put all your tools down inside the bucket, like the jackhammer and shovels and all that, and then you ride down on the rim of that bucket. One miner stands on one side of the rim and hangs onto the cable. The other miner stands on the other side of the rim to balance the bucket and hangs onto the cable, and you ride down on the rim of that bucket going down the shaft, so it's a pretty wild ride. And that was all before OSHA and MSHA and all that. There's uh, one of those buckets up close if you want to see it up close, but that tank back there, that's called a receiver, and that's an air storage tank for that compressed air, so it holds up the air pressure on that compressed air. And this, again, is really self-explanatory. This is how the Oldsheimers did back in the 1890s. Uh, all, it's called a hand crank windlass, and all by hand, they moved those buckets up down in the shaft there, so it was all manpower back in the old days. And then this is called a sink and hammer here. Kind of looks like a jackhammer, but that's the type of drilling machine that we use for going down in the shaft like this, and it does work uh, just a little bit different than a jackhammer or something. And we'll walk over this way. Just be careful on this rail here. I tripped over this rail, and it's really embarrassing, so be careful. 